Welcome to Mixtapes and Tasty Cakes with your hosts Bert Lafour, Damian Monte Carlo, and Angry Mike D. Well, Alright, sit back and enjoy the ride as they talk about all things that rock and other useless knowledge you don't care about. And remember, every asshole has an opinion. This is theirs. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. <laughs> All right, we're back. Another episode of Mixtapes and Tasty Cakes. This one, we're doing uh, a Mike D pick uh, uh, album review from uh, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Uh, this album's called Flight B741. And, and look, uh, he, he's so excited that he's still <clears throat> right now. I think he's yeah, frozen. I, still. I'm trying yeah. to get my. Oh, there there he go. goes. No, Real, reality, reality kicked in. There I'm we, sorry, yeah, Demo. Yeah. There you there off. we yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, up until, I don't know, Mike first started talking about these guys a couple years ago. I've never heard of them, but, but now it's funny because I hear a lot of people talking about them. So they definitely have like some on the ground, uh, following and i remember you saying that the, all the albums they sound different and man this is this is a, this is uh def, definitely different than i think we reviewed another one of theirs before we did we did right? the yeah. uh proto uh yeah the godzilla proto yeah yeah i yeah i wasn't expecting this i mean this is pretty uh this is pretty pretty damn good i i i liked it yeah he put it on the other day and the first thing I said is, I'll put money on Damien's going to like this. Yeah. No yeah. way is he going to expect to like this, but he's going to like this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I was very pleasantly surprised. Uh, I thought it was a pretty solid album, top to bottom. And uh, it had a vibe. Yeah, man. It, vibe. Sound, it sounds like it was recorded like 1970. Mm -hmm. It's so weird. Like, it's, yeah. yeah, it doesn't to just steal the vibe and put it now. It kind of feels like it was back then. It does. I mean, it sounds like it. It it's it's amazing because uh, it's amazing when bands can do that, recreate a whole sound and vibe and everything. And uh, it it blows me away that they that somebody could recreate that feeling. Mm -hmm. if that's what they were going for. I mean, they did it. They nailed it. Uh, Absolutely. It sounds like a, like a late seven late sixties, early seventies record. I mean, uh, you could see, you know, if if if. They went on tour with uh, uh, Vanilla Fudge or or uh, Led Zeppelin or Herman's Hermits or whatever. I would mm -hmm. not be surprised. You know, they could have they could have went on one of those tours with any of those bands back then. But by the way, this album sounds. Yep. So uh, you know how we do it here when we do the reviews, we give it a rating from one to ten. Usually the one to five, not so good. Six, it's pretty decent. 6.5, not bad, maybe for the collection. 7, pretty good. 7.5, you're definitely going to buy that thing. Anything after that, an 8 and up is, is pretty damn good. You're going to want to definitely check it out. So, um, yeah, we're going to do King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. And you know what's funny? Every time I kind of type out that name, I always mess up the Z's. Like, I don't know which, how many got two Z's, which got one Z. It fucks me up. Is it Gizzard <laughs> one or two, is it? Right. Yeah, and then you get, go to Lizard and you're copying what Gizzard is. And it's like, wait a minute. It's, it's, yeah, it's real. Even different. though you know how to spell Lizard, I hope. But for some reason, I always thought that their name was called King Gizzard and the Electric Lizard Wizard. <laughs> I th I, for some reason, I thought Electric was in there. You know, before, <laughs> since Mike. They used to have a little electric stuff in there. Yeah. Since you are a fan, like before you even get into this and the rating, mm -hmm. um, did their name come from anything? Was there, was there a King Gizzard or some bullshit? So, or? From, from what I read, Half the band wanted to be called King Gizzard. The other half wanted to be called the Lizard Wizard. And I guess they compromised. Yeah. It's a lot to put on a t-shirt. <laughs> but guess what, though? You know, once you say it a few times, it's definitely memorable. So I think it's I think it's a great name for a band. It's there. It's Def definitely, definitely there. it sticks in your head. You ain't going to forget that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's start this off. There's 10 tracks on this record. Uh, one to 10. And uh, here, here we go. We're going to come in with, coming in at number 10, Hog Calling Contest. Damo, what you got? Uh, I, I like the whole album pretty equally. I mean, it, it, it was pretty solid for me. It was hard to give it, to give one song a really low score, another one 
real high. It was I, I I think for me, I think it was it pretty much all averaged out to be between like seven and eight. Uh, so I tried to, I got, I know you, you know, you give Timmy about the seven point this and that, but I, <laughs> I had to, had to be very specific because that's what yeah. I felt. Yeah. But, uh, this one I thought <laughs> was one of the better ones. Uh, I, I gave it yes. a 7.5. It kind of reminded me of like a sixties jam band. Yeah. Feel to it. Like grateful dead. And I don't like the grateful dead at all, but it sounded like, like an exciting grateful dead song. Uh, you know, um, maybe a little proggy, a little bit. If anything is going to be like prog, it'll probably be this song. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. Nice, Mike D. And, and this was probably my least favorite on the album. And I, the first time, I, first couple of times, I liked it, and then by the third or fourth time, I kind of started getting a little irked by this one. I don't know if it was just, it was just so like so upbeat. It was just, it almost reminded me of like, like some kind of like Southern Baptist music, like yeah. mixed with gospel. Had a go- has something. definitely has a gospel feel to it. And, for sure. Yeah. And, and uh, I don't know, but I mean, I didn't really hate it. Like if I put the album on, I'm not going to be irked to the point where I'm going to want to skip it, but it, it did have some fun moments in it. And, you know, but for me, it just didn't really cut it. Um, hot calling contest. What would you give it, Mike? What did you give it? Oh, I gave it a five. Okay, I mid, gave it a five mid, also. Mid. I gave it a five too. It's okay. Uh hot calling contest. For me, not too much here for me. Uh yeah, not for me. Instant skip for me. <laughs> An instant skip for me. This is there's probably three tracks I would skip on this record, and that that's one of them. So uh coming in at number nine, Daily Blues. What do you got, Demo? Uh Another one I enjoyed. Uh, it r- reminded me of like uh, uh, Roadhouse Blues meets like uh, some kind of wonderful from uh, Grand Funk Railroad. Had that kind of, <laughs> dun, 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 you know, that kind of yeah uh, blues gallop, you know. And it was it was pretty long. I think it was like over seven minutes. But uh, mm. uh, another one I liked. I gave it seven point two five. There we go, Mike D. Yeah, I gave this one a six. It was a little blues jam. Yeah, it wasn't terrible. And I hate to say like a little long for but like for me, but on this type of music, like a blues jammy thing, it kind of like just doesn't do it really. I probably could have gave it another point higher. I don't know. Uh, it's a good thing it's at the end of the album because if you just want to hit the stop button at that point, <laughs> it's 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 easy. Uh Daily Blues, I gave it a six. Uh it's a cool blues jam. But nothing new or different. It's kind of like it's just there. It's a, you know, it's, it's it's there. You know, you could go to any street bar and hear that kind of deal. Um, all right. So coming in at number eight, rats in the sky. Rats in the sky. What do you got, Damon? When there's rats in the sky. Uh, another one I I, I really like. This one kind of has like a early seventies kind of bubblegum rock, bubblegum pop rock feel. Uh, I don't know, like, uh, it sounds like something that would have been in the Partridge family or something that you would have heard, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the Brady Bunch. Dude, sing. I got I got some notes that hit that point later on. Right? Thought, it's, yeah. it's real happy kind of yeah. poppy up-tempo rock song. I liked it a lot. Yeah. I gave it a 7.5. Dude, nice. Gamo off the charts on his fucking I, you know Gizzard what? and the Lizard Wizard. Actually... If I listen, if I listen to this out, I only, I only rate it on one listen. If I listen to it a lot more than that, probably everything would have been a point higher for sure. Wow. Demo really digging it. It was a good surprise, I think, for Demo. To yeah, start. it was a good surprise. Mike Day, Rats in the Sky, gave us one of seven. Fun song, up tempo. Yeah, like like Damien said, it had that old seventies kind of like pop feel to it. Yeah, I mean, I kind of dug this one. I could even gave it a little higher, but. You know, it wasn't a standout for me. It was just, it was there. It was really good, but. Yep. Okay. Uh, King Gizzard and Lizard Wizard fans. I promise after this one, it gets <laughs> better for me. <laughs> okay. So this is the last pretty low one on me. For me, it's at 5.5. One word. Skip. <laughs> so after that, it does get better. All right, guys. Coming in at number, uh, what are we here? Number seven. So you're seven. basically stopping it like track eight almost here. yeah exactly um number seven raw feel 
demo. Uh, one of my least favorite ones, but but still was worthy of a seven point one five score. I thought um, a little more, a little bluesier one. We got you got some harmonica in there and some slide guitar, but it's it, it's peppy. You know, I think most of the album has a peppy, happy, up uh, up tempo feel. But uh, I just didn't think it was as strong as the other ones, but still good enough for. 7.15 from me, I thought. Okay. Royal deal, Mike. Yeah, I gave this one a seven. I thought it was pretty much just a good, you know, southern rock feel to it. Not much more, but a really good song now. Yeah, I gave Royal Feel a 6.75. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, it sounds like that down home jamming, you know, it's like, you yeah. know, yeah, it, it's fun. Uh, the drummer's pretty busy in this song, Dave. Well, he's pretty busy in this song. Yeah. Uh, decent melody. Good pre-chorus overall. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Yeah, it, it's worth a listen to. It's definitely worth a listen to. Coming in at number six, Flight B seven four one, the title track, demo. Uh, a little more of a chilled out song, I thought. Uh, dude, it's crazy. That just how like it really puts you in that time period. I thought yeah. you know like, they did a good job with that. Yeah, really good job. Uh, I gave it seven point three. Okay, Mike D. Another one. I gave this one a seven. A little mid tempo, groovy, kind of old, almost like little bits of this gooey, like 60s sound in there. Like throughout it mixed in. I kind of dug this one. Yeah. Uh, Flight B741. I gave it a 6.7. Some blues jamming going on. I, I, it's funny. I could hear the verse and I can imagine a Ace really singing that verse. It's very yeah. laid back and drawn out yeah, the words. Yeah. I'm like, it sounds like you could be ace doing that part. Um, yeah, I, I, I dig it. It's very laid back, very laid back. Uh, yeah, it's okay, not too bad. Okay, guys, coming in at number five. We're already on five. Sad pilots. What do you got, demo? Uh, kind of remind me of like a later era, like Beatles song. It, like I, I could could see it being on like uh. I don't know, like let it be or something, uh, you know, but uh, yeah, it was kind of a little more mellower, but uh, not like it was like kind of like a downer. Definitely had has like a pop vibe, but just not as, you know, a little bit slower than the other ones. It's my least favorite one, but I still thought it was good and I liked it. I gave it a seven. Okay. Yeah, it's still a good score. Mike D. This one I gave a 7.5. I liked it. I thought this had a really good sort of southern black crows feel to it oh yeah uh that's funny you say that i gave seven set uh, i gave sad pilots a 7.5 and i wrote i hear the black crows immediately when the vocals come in uh i'm usually not a fan <laughs> of this type of song but this was pretty good i really like the back and vocals with the girls and stuff the back and vocals are really cool in this one it might be guys by the way who knows yeah his hair them <laughs> then who the fuck cares right it's somebody whoever's doing the back and forth was a pretty good job coming in number four mirage city damon what do you got for the mirage city uh another, another happy one definitely like a hippie flower power kind of song man this is this should be at this should have been at like woodstock for sure yeah i thought uh yeah. i gave it a 7.5 okay mike d yeah, I probably could have gave this one a little higher. I was juggling <laughs> around with this between a, a seven and an eight. I ended up giving it a seven point two five, but it's cool. Like I, I kind of like like the intro comes in, and then you're listening to the song. And it's like, well, where does that intro even fit in? And, and then when it gets to the end, it starts getting heavier, and you hear the intro kicking in again, and then it works with it like right there, and it it, it's, it gets really cool. I I, I probably should have gave this higher. Yeah. Um, so Mirage City for me. Uh yeah, I I kind of I kind of dug this one, I kind of dug this one. Um, right off the bat, it's funny because we're sharing a lot of the same ideas here. Right off the bat, I get the hippie vibe, yeah. demo. So uh, right off the bat, so I I wrote pretty much I got a hippie vibe right off the bat. The melody is pretty cool, pretty good tune. It's jammy at times. You kind of kind of can hear some Beatles to it. It's got some Beatles vibe to it. A lot of harmonies. Um, you know. I changed the score on this one a few times. It got higher every time I listened to it. So this one was definitely a grower. So it definitely, the more I listened to it, I go, oh, yeah, it's pretty good. Because it might have started out as like a 6.5 for me, and then it started building up. I'm going, and I might even gave it higher if I listened to it again. I listened to it about three you know what? times. You know? I, I think what did it for me is I, I just didn't think it was a good opener, maybe. 
Right. Well, yeah. it opens up with that really annoying sound, right? If I can remember, is it like yeah, it's a long intro. <laughs> what is it, thing? Yeah, it has like a longer intro. Yeah, and then it kind of kicks in, you know. <laughs> All right, coming at number three, Antarctica demo. What you got? Are you cold in the Antarctic demo? Huh. <laughs> I, I didn't think it was cold. I thought it was another another hot track. There you go. Uh, would have been burn up the airwaves, you know, Casey Kasem on uh, the top 20 countdown, 1968. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I gave it a 7.25 score. Okay. Mike Ding. Yeah, I like this one, man. I gave it a 7.5. A little funky blues going in there. I mean, and I... I love those. There's like these little piano parts in there, these little jazzy piano parts going in throughout there. And it kind of reminds me of like stuff they were doing on their, their Brunswick album. I, I, I kind of dug this one. Okay. Antarctica, I gave it a 7.5. Uh, it's weird. Like I said, the beginning of it, this one too, also, the beginning of it's fucking really loud. And then it goes quiet. And then um, it goes to a different part. And then it quiets down again. And then it goes into this pretty cool sounding yacht rock song. Got definitely got the yacht rock feel to it, you know. I could hear this, you know, mm -hmm. like a summer breeze kind of type of song, yeah. you know. Seals so I, I kind of like this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, I gave this one a seven point five. I thought I thought it was pretty pretty good. Coming in number two, Le Risque, Damo. What you got for the older Le Risque? Yeah, it's it's got that some kind of wonderful groove again. Uh, that bass and drum intro and. uh yeah, a lot of them. Uh, it reminds me of like the, like the early Grand Funk stuff with, uh, uh, you know, prettier, poppier vocals. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. I gave it a seven seven five. There you go, Mike Ding. Yeah, probably one of my more favorite one of my favorite ones off the album. I gave this an eight point two five, and I, I know it's probably a little copy of it, but I love that radar love sound and beginning to it. Mm. And it just puts you in that mood of like just just a song to throw in on like a road tape when you're traveling. Yeah, cool track. Yep, I gave Lay Le Risque a seven point seventy seven. Uh, easily for me the best track on the record. Um, this got my highest score. Uh, I like the melody. I like the groove. I mean, this is a song that could be a Jack White song. You know, I hear Jack White all over this. You know, um, it's got a fun quirky thing going on. It's probably where I get the Jack the Jack White thing. Um, yeah, this one for me has high replay value. This would make the mixtape. Definitely make the mixtape for me. All right, guys, coming in at number one. What came in at number one? Field of Vision. Demo, what do you got for the old Field of Vision? Uh, yeah, this was uh, my favorite track. Uh, it looks like it was uh, Mike's also. And I, it was my second favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sounds a little more modern and by modern i mean like 1973 <laughs> <laughs> yeah because because now now they're into the uh early glam rock period yeah. it sounds like is this reminds me of like bowie t-rex sweet nice like uh, yeah. like a fun like uh power pop rock glam rock anthem I think Damien's going to listen to this record more than we think. Yeah. I think he's going to go really? back to this record. I think this, so. This could yeah, be a good intro to, to King Gizzard for him. Could be. It could be. Yeah. But, I'm, I'm impressed that Damien likes it. Well, I yeah. know he's going to like it, but definitely impressed. We might have found a new gem for Dame to dig I into. Think, yeah. Good stuff. Mike D. Yeah, without ruining some of your notes, because I know we talked about this one a little bit too. So, but okay. I like this one. I like this one a lot. This is my favorite off the album. <laughs> 8.5 bluesy wow. of course like the whole album is very poppy this is like in your face like kind of another driving song this is just a fun song great song yeah i gave field division a 7.75 my second highest rating it could be a jack white song another one it has a beatles meets grand funk thing going on i mean the verses i could hear in my head american band the verses the american bands so you didn't use it did you feel What's that? Alice Cooper, the old Alice Cooper. It reminded when yeah. I first heard it, it reminded me of the Alice Cooper band, like early Alice Cooper yeah. for some reason. Uh, when I put it on, I was like, "Wow, this sounds like early Alice Cooper." Because I didn't know what it was yet, and I was like, "Oh shit!" I'm um, like, "Nah, man, this is King Gizzard." <laughs> yeah, I kind I kind of like this one. This, this is pretty good. It's definitely a cohesive record, you know. Um, so, all in all, as we tally all the totals here, Damiano gave this record a seven point four two which is pretty damn good. 
Mike D gave this record a 7.1. I gave it a 6.78. And the total for King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, Flight B741, 7.1. So it makes the good column. It makes, uh, you know, it makes the worthy to check out kind of column. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go to final thoughts here. We're going to start out with Damien. What's your final thoughts on this record, Dame? I was pretty, I was pretty blown away by it. Honestly, uh, I I wish I would have had more time with it because it easily would have got a higher score. And I'm it, uh, definitely has replay value with me. I'm going to listen to it uh, a lot more. I like I like everything about it. I think the songs are great. I love the sounds. It sounds it's totally retro. I I love the fuzz guitar sound and the <laughs> organ and the the vocal really? sound <laughs> and mix everything, man. The the vocal mix and everything. It sounds. I, I'm I'm like really like blown away. Any anybody that could recreate a certain sound without you know you, you always hear like uh you know I'll just say like Lenny Kravitz like some of his stuff does <laughs> sound old but it doesn't yeah. sound like it could like, right. it was recorded at that time right. period like this or like the Black Rose or something yeah they all have like that classic uh uh the songs are uh, kind of reminiscent to a certain time period but they don't sound like like it was from then this is like a freaking like recreation mm -hmm. of like from like 68 to 72 or something like that's where it sounds yeah. like it could have been recorded and uh the songs are i think the songs are, are, are really good too you know and it doesn't sound like it's a ripoff of something they all sound like new like new songs to me Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's the one cool thing about when we do the reviews or even when we do anything on the podcast with music or anything, entertainment, movies or whatever, as sometimes one of us or all of us trip over something that we don't expect to like. And then when you like it, you're like, oh, shit, you know, mm -hmm. that's the cool thing about doing this. You dive into stuff that you might not have put on before, you know, and uh, Damien, like, you know, it's perfect example, found something like, you know, we done stuff before with them. Mike always talks about them. We always kind of go, oh, I don't know, you know, but yeah. this this one was good for Dame. So it's good. It's nice to trip over something that you, you fall into and go, oh, shit, this is pretty damn good. You know, I did that yeah. with the warning a couple episodes we did ago. I was like, wow, this is really good. I dig this, you know. So you, you find something really cool. That's, that's what makes this fun when we do it. It, it really it's, does. It's amazing how much music they put out too like what do they put out they definitely put out an album 26 or two records 20 yep and how many Crazy. years mike 14 26 and they, still, and they still tour right they tour well, their first album i think i think i would say 12 years because i think they didn't put an album out until like 2012 so mm. yeah but still yeah man oh. that's a lot of records and i mean they're not just like throwaway albums i mean they really have some good stuff on them it's yeah not like, yeah they they get into what they do and you know they 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 really try to recreate it and they have their own sound like like throughout everything you listen to like you kind of put like once you listen to a few of their albums you can just put on it and like hear a track home on like a new one of theirs like oh, this is this has got to be king gizzard because they just got their own little little feel to it it's hard to get guys to do six to ten songs a year <laughs> let alone right. two yeah. albums yeah, it's, it's, it's impressive yeah. man they're they're workhorses man yeah yeah, it's I'm, definitely a throwback compared to like when bands in the seventies, you know, and I'll say Kiss, maybe Alice Cooper, or whatever. You would get maybe two a year sometimes, and that that was kind of neat, you know. Yeah. So, so Damien, if if you like this one, I would say probably the next one to check out would be Fishing for Fishies. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's it's sort of like on the lines like the blues, like this one. It's it's not as perfected yeah, yeah. as this one, it's but it's good. One. I like. Okay. It. Yeah. yeah. It's I'm, it's, a, it's another fun album. I'm definitely going to going to get more into uh into their discography for sure yeah they're 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 a fun band man they're a very yeah. fun band yeah mike d what's your final thoughts on this record final thoughts i i liked it i liked it a lot and if it wasn't like 40 bucks right now i'd have it in my collection i just refuse to pay 40 bucks for 10 songs it's, it's this just single vinyl this is a vinyl yeah. album for sure. But I mean, yeah. this is something. It, when this lowers out to twenty five bucks, this is definitely going to my collection. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's a great album. Yeah, you could get me to buy a vinyl thirty bucks when it's higher than thirty. I had to really think about it. <laughs> you know. Well, you know, I figure at that point it's like I got to buy two things. You know, I'm like, yeah. So yeah, it's I like, know what you're saying. I don't know for, and it's a, like what kind of even threw me off too is a recycled vinyl album. So it was kind of like. Paying forty bucks for a recycled vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're playing in Philly next week. Oh, I think yeah, they, they've been here quite a bit. At least Where three or four they? times. 
Uh, the Dell, which is like next door to the uh, Man Music Center. Okay, I bet you it's going to be packed. I bet you they oh, pack the place. I think yeah. they're a bigger band than than you realize. I mean, yeah. I looked at that Spotify and they're hitting about one point seven million views. I listen. That's so, crazy. Yeah, I mean they're yeah, nice. they're, they're they're no uh, slouch. It, it goes gonna, to show I'm you how be much away it's next out week. There. But if if I wasn't, I'd probably consider. Uh, Maybe next time they come around, we'll go see the old King Gizzard. It's almost yeah. sold. It's <clears throat> just about sold out. Wow, yeah, they're they're bigger than we think. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. telling you. A, I mean, I don't know what this. It's the Dell Music Center. What is that? What's the capacity? It's it's fucking sold out. The only thing they have is uh, uh, the Dell Music Center. I'll give you a funny story though. So capacity. when I first started listening to them, I I came in kind of around their Naganon Infinity album, and uh, I'm like, wow, this is really cool. And I'm listening to it, and then I find out like two days later after I just discovered the album that they're playing in Philly. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. it's weird now. Like Damien just found, like, <clears throat> like started to like him. He's oh, they're playing in Philly in like two days. So yeah, it's 52, 52, they're here a good people. bit, that, and it's wow. so, it's sold out. That's How many people? Damien fifty two hundred. Wow, they might have been able to sell more. <laughs> that crazy? That's crazy. Damn. Yeah, that's crazy. And it it goes to show you though. I mean, I, I only knew this band, like I said, because of Mike. Um, and it goes to show you that how much stuff is out there that we don't know. Yeah, There's different right. types of music that are huge right now that I have no clue what it is. <laughs> and I'm like, what is this? It's and, it's and it's huge. And you're like, how could it be so huge that we don't know? <laughs> but it's there's a lot of shit out there, man. A lot, a lot of stuff. Um, all right, my final thought on B741 from King Gizzard and Lizard Wizard. Um, when I put this on, the best way I can explain it is imagine a TV show or an after school special where the kids are singing in the middle of the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's kind of, <laughs> my, my God. You know, like when you said Brady Punch or something like that, it, it, yeah. It, yeah, it works. Uh, I, I like the nostalgic feel of it. Uh, that's what makes me like it. Um, <sighs> but that's running through my head the whole time I'm listening mm -hmm. to it. You know, uh, but with this band, you never know what you're going to get. They do so many different things. Uh, you don't know what to expect. Uh, the band plays well. I mean, that, they're a talented bunch of guys or kids or whatever they are. Um, sometimes the style's not my thing, you know, on some of their other stuff. And sometimes it is. Um, but this one, I think out of their whole collection, even though it didn't hit a seven quite for me, this is definitely one of their most listenable songs. I mean, I'm only going to skip one or two songs. On the record, I probably won't even skip it if I listen to Vaughn. I'll just listen to it. So uh, even though I didn't hit a seven on it, it's definitely one of their more listenable records. And I would go back to this, and it'll probably get a higher rating, you know, three months from now from me. But uh, yeah, so King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, we give it a 7.1. All good here. I think the album definitely has a cool retro feel to it. They pulled it off, right, Damo? They pulled yeah. it off. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, mixtapes and tasty cakes. Who knows we're going to be reviewing next week or talking about. Stay tuned. There might be another King Gizzard album out next week. <laughs> yeah, Who it knows? Could, yeah. It could it be. could happen. It, <laughs> it, it could be. Take care, guys. See you next time. All right. Later.